Something I hear from moms every day is, I really just don't want Pitocin. So many moms want to avoid having Pitocin in labor, but how do you do that? By the end of this video, you will be equipped to give birth to your baby without Pitocin. Just a disclaimer before we begin, this video is not meant to substitute for medical advice, and you really need to have this discussion with your provider about what's best for you, and you need to make your own decisions. However, if you choose to want to avoid Pitocin, these tips can help you. Keep in mind, all of my videos and all of my tips are for a normal, healthy mother-baby diet, and there's always going to be extreme cases and other situations where medical intervention might be necessary. I'm in no way telling you to avoid medical attention whatsoever. Let's dive in! So real quick, if you want to keep getting updates for more tips and tricks about labor, go ahead and subscribe to this video, and make sure you press the little bell so that you always get notifications when I post a new video. So what is Pitocin? Why might you need Pitocin? And why do some people not want Pitocin? Let's get started. So when your body goes into labor, you produce a hormone called oxytocin. And oxytocin is responsible for a lot of things in life. It's known as the love hormone. And oxytocin, like when it flows through your body, you know, it's what gives you strong contractions. Oxytocin is responsible for strong contractions. So if your labor starts to fizzle out or your contractions are not working effectively, your provider might want to give you Pitocin, which is a synthetic version of oxytocin, to help your labor pick back up. Okay, that makes sense, but why don't people want Pitocin? Every medication and intervention comes with risks. Um, Pitocin, quite frankly, can be very uncomfortable. Contractions with Pitocin can be very strong, they can be long, and they can be very, very intense. And a lot of people find themselves not able to handle the intensity of labor contractions with Pitocin. So they don't want Pitocin just from a comfort, comfort standpoint. Additionally, it does come with risks of, you know, increased need for other interventions, it comes with the risk of being able to possibly affect your baby's heart rate in a negative manner. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different reasons that people might not want Pitocin. If you're having a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean, a lot of providers want to avoid Pitocin because it can increase the risk of uterine rupture, which is one of those risks we have with VBAC that's very rare but real. So there's a lot of reasons out there that somebody might want to be avoiding Pitocin. They might have had Pitocin with their first labor and really want to avoid it this time for a different experience. So I've got three tips for you, how you can avoid Pitocin during your labor. Tip number one is to wait for labor to start on its own. Spontaneous labor means that your body is actually ready to go into labor. So if you don't need to be induced for medical emergency, try to avoid induction. Getting induced means you're telling your body to go into labor before it's ready. So instead of your body creating a like hormonal cocktail that kickstarts labor, you're pushing synthetic hormones to make that happen. So if your body is not signaling to create those hormones, it's going to be a lot harder for your body to create those hormones on its own once you've introduced the synthetic hormones. So if you can wait for labor to start on its own, that's the very first step to avoiding Pitocin during labor. So the second thing you need to do to avoid Pitocin during labor is to encourage natural oxytocin. How do you do this? By encouraging safety and intimacy. When you feel safe, you create oxytocin. Intimacy creates oxytocin. It's the love hormone, remember? But if you feel nervous or scared or uncomfortable, then your body is going to start creating stress hormones. Cortisol works directly against oxytocin and can prevent your body from doing what it needs to do and having an effect of strong labor. It's not unheard of that when you go from your home to the hospital, labor slows down or might stop altogether because of that safety factor. So if you can labor at home for a while, 
do that. Labor is home as long as you can. Get into a good active labor pattern at home and then head to the hospital if that's where you're birthing. If you're birthing at home, even better because you never have to change out of your safe, secure environment. If you are going to the hospital, once you get to the hospital, if labor kind of slows down a little bit, know that that's normal and you don't need Pitocin right away to kickstart things. What you need is to get into a safe, comfortable, settled in feeling. So you can turn the lights down, you know, get intimate with your partner, have um, some people like to do fairy lights to keep it just kind of like dark and cozy and reminiscent of being home and comfortable and feeling safe. Another way to get oxytocin flowing through your body is to snuggle with your partner kiss, make out. Um, if your water hasn't broken yet, you can have sex during labor if you're up to it. Um, things like that, like just being very close and intimate with your partner and having very few interruptions and not a whole bunch of extra people in the room can really help the oxytocin to naturally flow through your body. My third tip for avoiding Pitocin during labor is to labor in an upright position. Labor in a manner that you can move around as much as possible and encourage physiological birth. If you can encourage your baby to move down and encourage your labor to progress with getting in positions that are supportive of labor, then this is gonna, t like, it's not gonna hinder labor. It's not gonna slow you down. If you're in a position where your body isn't supporting an open pelvis and your baby's not able to easily move down, your contractions and labor might start to fizzle out or become ineffective and not efficiently pushing baby down and efficiently making cervical change and efficiently doing all the things that need to happen for your baby to come out. So my third tip is that if you can labor in an upright position or any position that supports an open pelvis and physiological birth, then you can reduce your risks at having Pitocin. I have one more bonus tip for you. I know I said three, but I'm gonna give you four. And that is to have a solid support team. You have to, you have, to have a supportive team around you. That means your provider. Whether that's a midwife or an obstetrician, your provider needs to understand what's your, what your wishes are and that you want to avoid Pitocin and they need to be supportive in that. They don't need to be coming in pushing it because that's their protocol or pushing it because that's what they normally do. They need to understand your goals and find a way to help you support them. Your partner, your partner needs to understand your goals and know how to stand up for you and speak up for you if you need that. They need to be in your corner and understand what's important to you. And if you have a doula, your doula is probably going to be a really, really key player in helping you achieve your goals because she's going to understand what's important to you and she has a whole bunch of tips and tricks to kind of help you reach your goals. Okay, now I have a question for you. Can you do me just a teeny weeny little favor? I want you to make a comment below about which tip you think is the most helpful in avoiding Pitocin during labor. Which one do you think is going to be the easiest to bring into your birth space? Go ahead and hit like for me and hit subscribe so that you can be updated with more birthing tips, tricks, breastfeeding support, and make sure that you walk into motherhood with confidence.